for sure. Uh, even more so than most of the time when all the teams are right together, you got to fight for every win. And certainly getting another one in our column here this morning was good. It, it sets us up good, but we're still going to have to have a great game tonight and hopefully cap it off. Yeah, so I, I pretty easily speak for my whole team. We love it. The more curl, the better. Um, I would say 95% of the athletes out here love the extra curl. It's a very, very small minority that would be opposed to it. Um, and yeah, we, we loved it that game. I definitely hope that's what we get for the rest of the week here. Can I just... Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious. You throw one rock and it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty clear what's happened. Um, I've been on both sides of it before. It really doesn't uh, bug me one way or the other. I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, I don't think it matters really one way or the other. Like you, when you throw your first rock, you see it, so. And I, yeah, I just want to highlight, like all of us love the curl. That's what makes all these touch shots and big shots you see on TV. That's what makes them possible is all that curl. And if anything, it was starting to get a little bit on the straight side out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, so with freshly papered rocks, um, basically you're just like, you're going to get more curl. Um, and yeah, I mean, the reason why the players love it is it just opens up a whole new set of shots you can play. You can come around rocks with hack weight and hit them out. Um, yeah, and it just like uh, promotes that nice positive release. Um, yeah, it just opens up a whole new set of shots that you can play. Um, whereas on straight ice, um, you can it, the shots can be a little bit more uh, limiting. Yeah, you know, I think it would be hard pressed to look at this field and say uh, it, it wasn't good. I mean, you had all the all the representation across the country, plus all of the top teams. It was really one of the best Friar fields that uh, I can think of for a long time. Certainly the best one in the five years that I've been here. Um, and that really means something. It means that when whoever wins this week, whoever picks up the trophy on Sunday, they will have beaten everyone there is to beat here. And that, that means something special. Um, yeah, I mean, I like eight ends. I mean, the ice, actually, the ice, I think, actually has been pretty good here, even through 10 ends, um, at least from what we're seeing. It's been good through the whole game. But, I mean, just from a, like, there's so many games this week. Um, the extra two ends every game just adds up. Um, eight or 10, I mean, they're both good. But I think it does seem like players do like having eight ends, so. Yeah, you know, it's always nice to get off to a good start. And we definitely had that that game. Um, got a good deuce in the first end and then followed it up with a steal of two. And that really opens it up for us. That allows us to not expend a ton of energy, play our game, manage the scoreboard, do all the things we're, we're really quite good at, I think, um, and definitely take it. Uh, that said, you know, like all the other teams here, you can't let off the gas a little bit or they'll catch you. You know, in our game against Cooey yesterday, we got up for early and within 20 minutes we were back to uh, almost neck and neck a grind again so you really got to play well the whole game through and, and I think we did here today well, I think this year's an outlier so this year yeah you could have made an argument that without fans here without people having purchased tickets to watch the game um, that you lose a lot of the argument for why there's a minimum uh, that said I would hope that this year is the only year we're playing a briar without fans so I think you run into the exact same conversation next year. I, I do think for a lot of the teams, though, this is their one chance a year to get onto arena ice. It's their one chance to play the top teams. And if, and if they're really trying to get better and trying to develop and do all those things, I think it's beneficial for them to, to play. Um, sometimes it's a little tough on both sides of it. It's tough when you're losing early to keep staying out there. It's tough when you're winning early to stay on the gas, but this is a this is a national championship and it means something. So I, I don't see the issue there. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it it could. I mean, you can always go as the ice maker. I mean, we did and we knew. So, but that being said, it wasn't. It's not an issue out there. The ice is fantastic. Um, the speed stays the same for the whole whole game. So I don't know where the announcers are coming up with that. You know, you could only play eight ends because we played an extra end yesterday and the speed was the same from the first shot of the game to the last shot of the game. So, um, you know, should they have papered them? That's, that's not up for me. I mean, obviously we're playing good and we don't have an issue with the ice. So 
some people might just say that because we're winning, but uh, we didn't have an issue with it today. Uh, so that, that's what all I can say. Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're always in communication with the ice makers. Um, I think that's just our due diligence as curlers, you know, to see what what he's doing, what he might be changing, you know, whether it be temperature or, um, you know, if he's doing something different with the pebble or the scrape, um, you know, it, everybody has access to him, um, and can ask them whatever, whatever they want, um, to, to kind of get an, an idea or a feel for what the ice conditions are going to be like. Um, so we're, we're always talking to Greg, um, just so that, you know, we are as prepared as we can be for, for however he's prepared the surface. Yeah, we'll, we'll add in there. We just about ask him every draw what we can expect because, you know, he can't just do the same thing all the time, right? The conditions change outside. It's super warm here today, so there's lots of variables, right? So, yeah, we ask him what we can expect, and he'll, he'll tell us, and he'll tell every team that if they go ask him. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, every game is huge, obviously, um, you know, we came in today knowing that if we win both our games and then we're in the final. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we're focused on. This was the first step of that. Um, you know, we just, we just missed getting the hammer there in practice, but got a good force early. Um, then had a really, really good second end. Maybe, you know, we maybe caught Gunner on a little bit of a fresh spot there on his last and over curled and we ended up getting three and then we kind of never looked back. Um, so that's basically how that game went and we're looking forward to a good one tonight against Wayne. I mean, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, sure, I think I prefer eight ends in the long run, but definitely not for those reasons. Like I said yesterday, I mean, you have two full practices, 11 ends and the speed is the exact same at the end, the, the surface is great. The ice surface is great. Um, so I prefer eight ends, but not, not for those reasons. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, that would be nice, obviously. I mean, the reasons to have eight ends are, you know, fans, you know, when we do have fans, they come and they pay and, you know, they want to see some action. So if you have four games that all go six ends, then, you know, you got probably a bit of an issue there. Um, so I think, I think we as curlers understand why we have to play eight, eight ends. Um, it sometimes can be frustrating when you're, when you're getting beat. I mean, you want to get off the ice as soon as possible. Um, I, I just think it's one of those, one of those things that just as curlers, we have to just deal with because it's at that point, it's not really about us. It's about the people that are, that are paying, paying money to, to come and watch us. And then the people that are watching it on TV as well. Uh, you know, I, I think this format is great. Um, I don't think you need three wildcard teams, but, you know, this is a abnormal year, right, with nobody being able to play playdowns. I think the format they had the last couple of years is, is probably probably the one they should they should stick with. I think everyone should be, all the territories and provinces should be represented and then, um, you know, have your one wildcard team defending champ and, and then everyone gets to play. And then, you know, once you get to the championship round, it, I mean, the curling is unbelievable. So that, that'd be what I'd like to see. Uh, the, the ice was definitely a little different today, but, uh, you know, you got you to gotta make those adjustments. I mean, maybe the, the timing of it wasn't necessarily the best, but, you know, it's the, the whole game of curling is about making adjustments and, and you got to be able to do that. Um, whatever the ice and the rocks, everything throws to you. It's, it's all about just making those adjustments. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe timing and a little bit uh, yeah. poor communication, but I guess that's life sometimes. But at the same time, like Maddie said, you got to make some adjustments. And um, fortunate enough, we had Maddie here seeing it well today and putting the boom down well for us with that adjustment. So um, it worked out well for us. I, I talked to Greg before every single game, and he gives me the total 100% honest answer. I mean, we're working with, with the best ice makers in the world. So um, the relationship between them and the players is, is real good. Just yeah. a quick thought. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say similar to that. Uh, I started it a few years ago and try to have that conversation before every game, just to kind of get your mind mind right for what uh, what to expect. Well, I I can't I can't putt at the best of times, so it's I can't really relate to that um, exactly. 
but I'll let Kirky take this one. Well, I'm not much of a putter either, but yeah, I would imagine that's probably a, a fair comparison is, is the practice green was, uh, um, was maybe cut and then the, the actual greens weren't. And, uh, and I, I would imagine that would be the, that would be a very good comparison. Yeah. We, we had a game plan coming into this one and we executed it perfectly. Um, right away. We, we took, took for, or we took what the ice was giving us, believed in it right from the get go. And, and learn to deal with it and, and make the best of it. Um, nothing, nothing changes for this team um, from here on out. We're expecting uh, what we saw um, this last draw the rest of the way. So there's no surprises anymore. Um, and we're just going to keep, do keep doing our thing. Uh, it's about as good as it gets. I mean, isn't this, isn't this amazing? It's every matchup out there, every single draw is a complete coin flip. I mean, it's such a great thing for curling um, and, and to be a part of it just to be around seven other world-class teams, watching them do their thing, compete at 90%, 95% level. It's what a treat it is to watch and be a part of it. And I mean, we'll, we'll take, we'll sneak out the wins when we can. I mean, there's, there's absolutely no gimmies in this field. So I, it, it's, it's a total treat to be a part of this. Yeah, I, I think, I think hundred percent. I mean, we said going into this, uh, uh, NEA team might be able to pull it out and that's kind of what we're just, we're just enjoying it. We're just playing good curling and we'll see where the chips fall. I think it's a bloodbath out there. Everyone's beating everyone. And we've seen that over the last that day and a half. And I don't think that's going to change. Uh, I don't think that's going to change tonight and into the weekend. So uh, like Maddie said, I think it's a great thing for curling to have this parody and uh, everyone that's watching doesn't know what's going to happen or who's going to win. And it makes it exciting. Thanks. That's great. It shows kind of the equality right now in the country and how good the teams are. And, you know, even look at the teams that are out there are teams that if we played this again next week could, could win the thing. So, you know, we got eight or nine teams right now in the country that are pretty darn good. Um, I thought it was great. You know, we, uh, every game that I play at the Briar before we go out there, I, I talked to one of the ice makers and, um, ask if anything's different. I did that today. And, and, uh, Greg said, there's going to be a little curl. He touched up the rocks and, so we knew, uh, knew what to expect in nice fort. And I thought it was great. I think the a little extra curl is going to make, uh, you know, the next three, four games, however many are left pretty entertaining. Well, I think for us, our game is, uh, you know, much, much more of a precision game than probably some of the other teams who, uh, you know, throw a lot of big weight. We don't do that. So when we get that extra curl, we can put rocks in places that we couldn't necessarily get to before. So, you know, I think if anything, we, we feel it's a benefit to our team. Um, you still have to execute. And, and uh, you know, with that extra curl, it, it, it's hard to get there, but we, I think, do probably a better job than most teams at getting it there. So uh, we enjoyed it. I thought tonight was, uh, or this afternoon was the best ice we had all week. Okay. I don't know, like we were playing the 10th end there today and, the ice had slowed down maybe two or three feet than it had in our draw to the button. Um, so we felt pretty comfortable adjusting for that and, you know, Brad throwing it and us sweeping it. So um, that's still really good ice if it holds up for all that practice and uh, 10 ends. I mean, it's always going to change a tiny bit, but if you can, uh, if you can figure it out, I mean, you're, that's still really good ice. Yeah, I think you could shorten the practice times. I think it needs to be, there is an advantage to having second practice, especially if the ice is a little, little slow to start. Um, you know, the slam, the way we do it at the slams where one team takes one side and the other te team takes the other, I think is a, a lot more fair. I think if we take it from nine minutes, maybe down to five minutes, you know, we don't wear that path down. Like we got probably four ends played down a particular path before uh, the game starts. So, you know, those paths right to the button probably are getting a little worn out. So there's, there's something that could be done there, but to Brett's point, I think it's, uh, it's holding up pretty good. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine either way, to be honest. I, I enjoy the eight ends at the, at the slams as I get older, I enjoy less more. <laughs> so, uh, but having said that to have a national championship at 10 ends makes it special. And, you know, the having a little bit of difference there, I, I don't mind it. You see that in tennis where, you know, the regular tour events sometimes are three sets and then the, the majors are, are five. You know, you, you could have some difference between, you know, event to event, just to differentiate them. Um, but I'm, I'm indifferent, to be quite honest.